Today lecture is about introduction to engineering economics. Many of you would say, hey, we're engineers. What the heck is economics had to do with this? It's not a business school. Well, the reality is, as an engineer, sadly, you will handle a lot of money stuff. You know, you could be a CEO, you could be uh, an engineer in purchases who's given his opinion on buying some engineering stuff. You know the stuff more than other people. So you've got to always be involved in economics, which we call it as engineering economics. Any economy-related topics that are being executed or in the field of engineering. The objectives for this chapter would be to understand the value of money, that money changes with time. That's the first topic. Then we will try to know the difference between simple and compound interest. It's a, a kind of a joking material that compound interest is the science of God, some people say. Prepare a cash flow diagram and we'll be able to learn how to compute present worth and future worth of money and uh, solve problems involving sinking funds and installment loans. As an introduction, we mentioned that engineers work as managers and CEOs as a manager or CEO for a certain company. You'll be involved in buying engineering materials and deciding on how the company is doing financially, especially if you are CEO or in the business office of that company. And uh, as well, engineers always need to make financial and technical decisions which affect the smoothness and the success of the company. As a young engineer, as yourself, after you graduate, you will be generating reports, could be engineering reports, analysis results. Those will influence, in a way or another, the financial decision of the company that you're working with. Now, let's start with the simple interest. As a history, the interest concept is 40 centuries old. Uh, back in time, in the early development of the United States, people used to exchange stuff. They will take, maybe you'll take a steak and give him back 10 eggs. Uh, maybe you take a, I don't know, rabbit skin. Maybe rabbit skin is cheap that time, but I mean, you could take a, a bull skin and give him back something else. Maybe you grow in a crop, maybe you grow in um, some kind of crop in your field and you give him back. The thing is people, because they are depending as farmers on the season, you know, today you are making wheat. Uh, maybe after six months you have no more wheat, but you still need to exchange to buy stuff maybe for the winter. Maybe you want to, of course, you want to buy meat, you want to buy eggs, and so on. So you would tell that guy who have the stuff that you need in the wrong time, which is not the season, you'll tell him, hey, give it to me. I'll give it back to you at the season. Maybe next year, maybe next uh, season, and so on. So that's where people start to exchange stuff for nothing, like I'll take something from you on a prorated time where I pay you. Then as time goes by, as people consume more, you start to take stuff, but you never bring it back. Like maybe you, take, you bring it back to me after three years. So in this case, uh, you gotta pay me for that delay or for that wait. That's where the historical region or origin for the simple interest. Now. You can see down here, exchange, but you see, this is a game for those of you who's a gamer. This is called an awesome, lovely game called Red Dead Redemption 2. And uh, in case you want to live in the uh, 800 century, that game is based on that. And you just ride your horse, you just exchange stuff, hunt some rabbits to exchange back. <laughs> it's a lovely game. I love to play it whenever I have time. So I encourage you to do so. So the equation for the simple interest, I would equal P N multiplied by I. I, small letter I, I mean. I is the interest accrued. P would be the principal amount. N is the number of interest periods. And I is the interest rate per period. What does that mean? Letters are letters until you make sense out of them. And equations are boring unless you can use them in your real life. If $1,000 loaned at 7% annual interest for five years, what's the value of the interest? 
you need to know which is which. Thousand is, what is it? Which is, which letter? That's B, and this one? No, this one. That's the small i. For five years, that would be your N. So what is the value of the interest? In this case, he's not asking about the total amount. He's asking about what's the value of the interest. Now, what's your P? Let's write down P equals, I see a thousand there. Your small i or the, your, your N equals five years. And the i is 7%. How would you write that mathematically? Perfect. Now, let's, let's solve it. Find the i for me. Okay. Regardless of the final answer, it's $350. Now, let's have extra step and find the total amount at the end of five years. What would it be? That's the f. f would be, yeah, you can do that. Then remember, f equals p plus i, which is exactly what you did. And that would be? So in our example, 1,000 is the P, 700 is, I mean, 7% is the small i, the annual interest, and five years would be our N, N equals five. Replace all the values in the equation, you'll be able to find i. Then we know as a total amount, F equals P plus i, so that would be 1,000 plus 350 would be 1,350. Now the compound interest, we said that we can derivate F to look differently, we said F equals P plus I, or F equals P multiplied by 1 plus N multiplied by I. Now, the principal amount P for one period, N equal 1, would be P plus PI, which would be P multiplied by 1 plus I. Now, P for the second period would be the P plus PI then plus pi plus pi squared, which would be p multiplied by 1 plus 2i plus i squared. Now, that would tell us there is a generalized form for finding the compound interest. That is, as we're doing, f equals p, open parentheses, 1 plus i to the power of n. And f here wouldn't be the current value as in the simple interest. It could be most likely the future worth of the sum generated after the end period, which is the future value of money. So we said to find the total value, F would equal P multiplied by 1 plus I to the power of N. Now P is your primary value, whatever you call it, the, the main value that you loaned or you lend it to somebody. I is your interest rate, N is the period or the number of years. Not always mean years, it means you could split your time that you're waiting on your compound interest into maybe half a year each payment, maybe per month. So it depends what kind of unit you use to find your compound interest. Now let's take an example here. Again, we have a $1,000 loan, 7% annual interest rate, and find the sum of the future worth at the end of the five years. So N equals 5, P equals 1,000, I is 7%. Now what's the future value of money in this case? F would equal P, which is 1,000, multiplied by 1 plus 0.07 to the power of 5. So that would be 1,000 multiplied by 1.07 to the power of 5, which would be 140, I mean 1,402.55. If you want to look at how the values changed, so you have here the simple interest, so you have the principal value and you have the interest, and you have here the compound interest. Now today, 
the principal value is 1,000, and for the compound interest would be 70%. For the first year, you have the interest to be 70, and the interest will be the same all the way after five years. While for the compound, you see the interest is adding up as the years counting by. So in this case, the compound, the final value for future based on the simple interest is different than the value based on the compound interest. So compound is interest is a heaven of money for you if you are a lender, and it's a hell for you if you are the borrower. That's the way I see it. Okay, another example. What is the total amount, principal, and interest must be paid at the end of four years if 8,000 borrowed from a bank at hefty 12% annual interest rate compounded <laughs> annually? I'd say I'll take it. <laughs> Semi annually, monthly, and daily. I'm going to do the annually, and you guys continue. Maybe I'll do the last one as well. So, always, maybe you will see something a little more complicated than this in the exam. That's fine. Don't panic. Always break things down as they should be. So, start with your P. Where is my P? Interest rate, 12%, 0.12, or 12%. What is the total amount? So, that would be the F. Uh, annually, that means uh, you have one year. Or, let's see, end of four years. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. So, n equals four. Now, f would equal p multiplied by one plus i to the power of n, right? Now, the trick is the whole example is easy, but focus on annually, semi-annually, monthly. How would you do that? You have four years, so your n is four years. Keep years in your mind. Annually means you're going to go four times of payment. Semi-annually, then you're going to go eight times of payment. Monthly, then you go 12, 12 by 4, daily, and so on. So now that would be our P is 8,000 by 1.12 to the power of 4 in this case, which would be $12,588.15. Okay, who's going to do the semi-annually for us? If annually we have four payments, semi, yeah, semi. Okay, no need to complete the, that's fine. Perfect. All right, thank you. Now the thing is, our I here is 0.12. What, what's that? That's the annual, annual interest. Now when you have semi, it's not the same anymore. So semi, how many? You have to divide that by. So I, for one year, that would be 0.12. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do it twice a year, how much would it be? Yeah, that you want to divide 0.12 divided by 2. Same thing for monthly, that would be divided by 12, right? Mm -hmm. When you have daily, I don't know how many days, 365 probably. Mm. Just everything is easy, but that's kind of a trick. Just keep an eye on it. Now, cash flow diagram. Many companies, many people love to have the cash flow visualized on the x-axis or in a certain way of uh, graphical style. Cash flow diagram can be identified as the visualization of the money transaction. Now, there is rules for the, there is rules for the cash flow diagram. What's the, what's the time? Okay. So there's rules for the cash flow diagram. Firstly, the horizontal <coughs> line is a time scale. It means when you draw the way you visualize cash flow, as you can see, you have one line. It represents either years, months, days, hours, whatever the way you do it. But the most common one is years. As the cash flow goes up, you can have any convention you want. But up would be you are losing, down would be you are investing or you're gaining, and so on. The horizontal line is a time scale. The arrows signify cash flow. 
the diagram depending on the point view of which it is constructed. It means are you looking at it as a lender or as a borrower? It's different. Your gain as a borrower is, is a loss for the lender and vice versa. So you can see here we have the P. Now you are a lender here. That's your time scale in years from one to four. As a lender, your P downwards arrow will be 8,000, so you got that. And the final future value would be, uh, so this is something going out of your pocket and this is something going in. For the borrower, this is something going into his pocket and this is something going out. Just there's a perspective into it, regardless of how you look at it. You can have any convention, like in the example, if you say, hey, arrow up means gaining, arrow down means losing, I wouldn't argue with you. Present and future worth. Of course, the value of any transaction, either loan or investment, would change with time. That is because of the interest, as we saw. Present worth P is the worth of monetary transaction at the current time, obviously. And future worth is the worth of the transaction at some point in the future. We said F for the compound interest equals P multiplied by 1 plus I to the power of N. And if you rearrange that equation, P would equal F multiplied by 1 plus I to the power of minus N. Now, as you're trying to make an investment, maybe buy a home, maybe you want to buy a real estate investment, maybe you want to open a company, you want to go to the bank, to lend you that money. There's questions that make sense. It's good to ask to be able to tell if you're in the right track or no. First, I would ask, does it pay back to make an investment now? You know, probably as the active news, you know that the interest rate went up recently, maybe in the last five, six months. So people start to avoid buying homes this time because it's a bad investment. Like, why would you buy it with a high interest while it was half of that before six months. What is the current benefit of a payment that will be made at some other date? Like, would I wait another year and things, percentage will drop, maybe the prices of houses will be, I don't know, lower or higher, and the percentage would be lower in half, and so on. Um, how does the monthly price paid um, in case of buying a computer to lease a computer compared to the future cost of a new computer? Like, should I rent a computer today or apartment today or buy a home in the future? So you need to ask these kinds of questions. How much money do you need to invest annually beginning at your graduation so that you can accumulate $5 million by the time that you retire? Of course, the answer for all these questions, regardless of the situation you are in, is to calculate your present and future worth of the transaction. Maybe you found a gas station that seems like a good idea to buy down in Florida. Then you're going to find what's the current value for that gas station, what's the future value, what's the input money coming in, what's the money going out per year, semi-annually, semi and so on. Now let's have another example. Below we have five transactions. Determine their present worth if money is currently valued at 10% annual interest compound annually and determine the current net cash equivalent, assuming no interest has been withdrawn or paid, then draw a cash flow diagram for each. Now, $1,000 deposited two years ago, how would it look like? Firstly, I would calculate the F, what the future value would be, or maybe the past value in this case. F equals $1,000 by 1.1, to the power of 2, that would be $1,210. You can see 1,000 as an arrow up and the final value today as an arrow down. Now for B, we have 2,000 deposited one year ago. Same thing, but you will have instead of N equal 2 to be N equal 1, that would be $2,200. Now we have 3,000 to be received one year from now in the future. In this case, we have P equals 3,000 multiplied by 1. 0.1 to the power of minus 1. In this case, you are looking at your P, not your F, because F is used to find past value, 
P can be used for future value. There is some exceptions for that, but you can have it as a general rule. Now, if you have 4,000 paid two years from now, you can treat the 4,000 as negative value, having the convention that paying is negative. P would be minus 4,000 multiplied by 1.1 to the power of minus 2 would give you minus $3,305.